Good evening. It's 7 o'clock Sunday afternoon. Time to do some painting. I hope y'all are joining me today. We're going to do the stacked presents tonight. Uh, it's a really fun cutout to do and, and it's really easy too. So I hope that uh, all of you will take a look at this video and get inspired for Christmas in July. And uh, hi Debbie. Good to see you. Glad you're here with us. I can see comments tonight. Sometimes I can see them and sometimes I can't. It's really strange. When I tilt the uh, iPad down to show the painting though, you probably I probably will not be able to see the comments. But I'll come back on after the video is over and I'll answer any questions you have and, and that sort of thing. But uh, this is a really fun, uh, a fun one to paint. And, and I think it's really easy and even a very basic beginner can do this without any trouble at all. So I'm going to tilt the screen down, let you see the finished product, talk a little bit about the supplies that you need and everything, and then get started. Maybe more people will, will come on while we're doing that. Good to see you today, though. Ah, falling off. Ah, technical difficulties. Got to put it back on the table. It's going to come off. it ah, and then it came off I'm not real great with all this technology I tell you all right now let's see if we can get it positioned a little bit better here we go okay this is our stack presents there's three different presents and they're they're tilted um, you can paint them in a lot of different color combinations, but I decided to go with the traditional red and green with just a little pop of the lime green, just to, to add a little bit of pop in there. Um, I think it would be so much fun to do them in, in shades of blue. Uh, you could do them in Astro's colors. You could do them in Texan colors. Um, you could letter on this big expanse here with your family name. Uh, there's just a lot that you can do with this. But I painted it very traditional tonight. I used red number 20. I used Christmas green number 11. For shading, I used the dark green number 12. I used shading red number 23. I use lime green, number 10, and of course black, number 37 to outline, and white, number 35. So I'm going to show you the one that, um, let's see, I base coated, move this one aside. I base coated white, a red top, green and white stripes, a red bow, white top, white with the lime green polka dots, a green top, and then red and white zigzags. I've already highlighted or shaded the, uh, the green on this one, and on my other sample I did the white. So I'm going to show you on this one how I did the white, and um, then on the other one I'll show you how I did the green, and while that's drying, then I'll show you how, it, how, how I did the red. Where did my paper plate go? What did I do with my paper plate? I'll have to get my paper plate. use a paper plate and I got a squeeze bottle to put my water in so that I can control how thin my shading 
my shading is. So I'm going to take a little bit of my red and put it on my paper plate. About two brushfuls is all I need. The shading red for me is just a tad dark, so I like to cut it just a little bit. Um, so then I take about two brushfuls of the shading red and put it on my paper plate. Then, you can see, I've got them side by side and I kind of mix my red into the shading red to get it just like one shade lighter. I, I just think that shading red for me on a small design is a little dark. So I like to have it just a little bit lighter. So I put my red and my shading red together. And this is pretty good consistency. If it wasn't, I'd put a drop of water in there. Then I'm gonna shade my zigzags. So I'm just gonna go down my zigzags across. I don't like that hard line that your brush will leave like this right here. So I come back over it and pick that up. If it brings too much of that hard line, I don't want that hard line on there. I got the top of that zigzag. Now I'm gonna do the bottom of the zigzag. And just, just let your brush ride right along the groove that's cut by the CDC cutter. And you get nice and straight lines. You'll have to re-dip your brush a couple of times. There's usually not enough paint on it to go all the way across without re-dipping. And I like mine to have all about the same consistency. And then go up the sides. So that zigzag is done. So let's do the next one. And this goes really fast. Just go up and down those zigzags. All my martins have pretty much flown the coop, so you won't hear any of my birds tonight. There's still a few little house sparrows around, but they don't make the noise like the martins did. I miss them, but they're, they're over roosting, getting ready to fly back south. Okay, that pretty much gets that zigzag. Now I'm going to come in and scoot this down just a little bit with my bow. And I'm going to mix some more of my red and my shading red up. I'm going to go both sides of the bow. Right there in the center. this loop part of the bow to be dark. So I'm taking the shading red and I'm filling that in completely with the shading red. Because I wanted that loop to be darker and you to tell that that was the inside of the bow. Now the other thing I did is 
I wanted a crease in the bow here. So I came in and just added a little bit more of my shading in the middle of that bow. And that's gonna give me kind of two halves of the bow. So it's gonna be very, very curved in there. Okay, so that's shaded. Now I'm gonna come up to my top, the top of my box. And I'm gonna shade it. And when I make a long pass like that, I move from my shoulder, not my wrist. I let my shoulder move my hand, not my wrist. And that way you can get these long, straight lines. Okay. And that's all the red shading that I'm going to do on that one. Now you can tell that I already did the same thing with the green. And I used my, my dark green. So I'm going to do the shading next with my dark green on the other blank that I have while this one dries. And I, I'm real frugal. I still have some paint mixed up here. So I'm gonna real quickly put that paint. I don't want that paint to dry. You'll be surprised at how much painting you can get done from one of these containers of paint. They really go a long way. I'm still on my very first container of black with all the painting I've done and it's almost empty. But this is the first container, it's the biggest container but you can really get a lot done with these, with these paints. They last a long time. So don't worry when you're, when you're buying the paint that you're gonna run out or that you're gonna need more than you think you're gonna need because they really last a long time. That's all my red paint that I've used up. So I'm gonna wash out this brush and I'm gonna get some of my Christmas green. And I'm gonna do the same thing on my paper plate that I did with the red with my Christmas green. I'm gonna take out about two brushfuls. Doesn't take a lot for the shading. And always put the lid back on because you'll get a little stem across the top of them if you don't. And then a little bit of the Christmas green. I mean, sorry, the dark green. And for your shading ones, you don't need the bigger containers. These smaller containers, they give you plenty for the shading because you use such a, a small amount of that. So when you're buying it, just buy the small ones of the, of the shading colors. But like your black and your white, you need to buy the big ones because those are the colors you're gonna use the most. So I'm gonna take a little bit of my green and I'm gonna mix my dark green with it. Got them side by side and I'm just mixing just a little bit together. And again, that consistency is pretty good. I don't really need to add any water.
let your elbow be rigid and move from your shoulder. And then if that line is a little dark, just come back over it with your dry brush. Pick some of that up. I put a design on the top of that anyway, so it doesn't show, doesn't show a lot. Now I'm gonna swing this around this way because it's easier for me to paint it this way. So I want to shade these green stripes across the bottom. Come up across the top. hot out here tonight and get a little beads of sweat I can tell early in the morning it's been really nice I've been liking painting early in the morning so I come out about 7 7 30 and start painting and paint until about 9 and then stop okay and there's my green shading that's all that's all the shading that you have to do on the green next I'll do the white shading this dries pretty fast out here so um, a lot of times I get a hair dryer if I'm kind of in a hurry or wanting it to go real fast. Sometimes I'll let it dry. I'll go in, get a drink, come back out. All right, let's see. I am looking for my gray. I didn't tell you what my spot was. Where is my gray? Don't see my gray. Okay. I did use number 24 gray in the shading of my white. I tried the, the beard blue and didn't like it. So I got this gray and you can use a little touch of black and make your own gray. You don't wanna buy the gray, but uh, the gray works pretty good. And I'm gonna cut it with some white just so I can be consistent with my colors. So I'm gonna mix a little gray and a little white together. And since I've got it here at the top, this is the bow and it's got three loops up here. So I'm gonna start in the center, make a loop. Come this side, make another loop. And then I'll go this side, make another loop. So I'll let that dry. While that's drying, I want to get the white stripes here. That's pretty much enough right there. Right, so I'll turn it a little bit. 
I turn my work quite a bit as I'm working on it to, to whatever, um, whether you're right-handed or left-handed, however your hand works best for you. Now around my polka dots, I want those polka dots to pop. So I'm gonna shade on the bottom half of those polka dots. But because of placement, they're gonna get into the top part of this shading too. I want the bottom, whole bottom of those polka dots shaded. So let that come up about halfway on that polka dot. Not all the way around, just about halfway. Just this side. And then this side. Okay? Now I'm going to shift this all the way around so I can get this other side. Because then I'd have to reach across that. Do the, the lid first. Get that shading in. Up the center. Underneath the bow and then across the bottom, but I'm going to catch this polka dot too. Okay, and that's how fast the polka dots are done. So now I've just got the zigzags to shade. answer that right now. I can call back later. I have it on so that I could maybe look over and catch a few questions if needed, but painting and doing the questions too, it, I, I'm not really able to do that that much. Our white's just about done. Okay, there's all the shading of the white. See, it goes pretty fast. lid I put snowflakes so I'm going to show you how to do some of the snowflakes put them random I put them large and small 
so I didn't really have to worry about spacing. Um, not trying to get them all exactly the same, it makes it easier for you. But they're just a little star shape. So I'm going to show you how to do that little star shape. Uh, I use a small brush. You can use your liner brush if you'd like. Um, but I just use a really small liner. And I get my white. And it needs to be pretty fluid white. And kind of start in the middle and work your way out to each edge. But a vertical stroke, a horizontal stroke, you may have to re-dip your brush, and then two diagonal strokes. And you got a snowflake. And you just want to vary the size and the placement. So some small ones, some little ones. Get some that go right up to the edge that are small. And then others that are larger. So you're just working a vertical stroke, horizontal stroke, and then two diagonals. And then you can fill this in all the way across. Do one side, then the other. And just vary the sizes of them, vary the placement. Then it doesn't matter if one looks a little different or is off from the others. Let some of them run off the edge. It's like they're covered in uh, wrapping paper. Some can be bigger, some can be smaller, some can be thin, some can be thick. It, it doesn't matter. You just want a vertical, a horizontal, and two diagonals. I won't fill in the other side for you. While I've got my white on my brush, I did a comma on each one of my polka dots. To give them a little highlight. Just big old comma. Okay. While I've still got some white out, show you how I highlighted. Let's see, I better do it on the other one though because uh, now let's see. I, I, can, I can highlight the bow just a little bit. I did a big curve at the top and I also added black ones too and then I came right above the bottom of the bow did another curve and then of a backward comma here. It's a little squiggly looking, so I'll smooth that up right there. And an arched one here. And then one down there. Now I also used my white highlight on my green stripes. Just put a highlight down my green stripe.
just like that. So we'll set this one aside and let that dry a little bit. And I'll show you how I did these circular motifs with a little white dot on this lid. So I took my dark green and that same small liner, get that where you can see it good. And again, starting in the center, I made a circle, then came inside that circle and connected it up. And came on around with another circle until I had a spiral. Don't try to, I don't try to do it all in one motion. I use about three motions. I make a half circle, because I can do that with my wrist, because your wrist wants to turn in a circle, so let your wrist do that for you. Then come up in the middle and do a circle going the opposite direction and connect them up. Then come back in and make that spiral tighter. And again, it doesn't matter the size, the placement. They can be larger, they can be smaller. You may want some of them to hang off the edge. Make them fit like that. Till you fill in your space, kind of the way it feels like it needs to be filled in. So a half circle, then come in, do a half circle the opposite direction, go back inside another half circle, till you get it as tight as you want it. So you're going to fill up this whole box lid, I guess you'd say, with these spirals. Then later, I just came with the end of my brush in white, if I can get enough white here. And in the center of the spiral, put me a white dot. And that's how the box lid was done. And I did that after I'd already shaded so that you got the shading on there. Um, the, uh, for the zigzags, I did a straight line and three dots. Straight line and three dots. And then on the white, I just did my black in a straight line. But I'll show you this straight line and three dots. Because it's, it's again, a very easy thing to, to do. And it looks real good. Let me get some of my white out. And I think that white's going to need just a touch of water in it to flow. So I'm going to put just a touch of water in there. And I see Connie doing it with a little cup and her spoon. And I'm going to get me some of those cups. I just haven't been to Costco or Sam's yet to, to get some of those. So I'm still using my paper plate. But I'm going to come straight down to the V and stop right at the V and then I want three dots. So straight down to the V on both sides and then three dots. like that. I don't like that one. Don't like that one? Wipe it off. 
That's the really great thing when this is dry. You can wipe off your mistakes and do it again. Got that one a little runny. So come right back in, straight down to my V. Both sides. Just like that. Now flip it around this way so I can get the other side. I do that on both of my zigzags. Now I think the last thing I want to show you is how I did the, the loops in the bow at the top uh, because the red, no, I have one other thing I didn't show you. Um, on this box lid, I just did my dark green and I did three dots in a triangle and I used the end of the brush. So pick out a brush that you like the end of, take your dark green, dip your brush in there, one dot, two dots, three dots, one dot, two dots, three dots, one, two, three. Again, size doesn't matter. Sometimes you'll have more paint than others. Just like that. And there you got that side done. Okay. For this loop up here at the top, got my black, and got a liner. You want to get quite a bit of paint on that liner. And I'm going to come across and do my straight line first because that's my first pass with my liner. I don't have quite enough paint on it. So I may have to make a couple of passes in the groove to get down in that groove. Your liner, once you've got a lot of paint on it, it starts working better on it for you. Now, see how much better that's doing now that I get more, more and more paint on it. So you want to come up to the top, around the curve, down pretty thin and it looks looking a little bit watery right there so I may have to go over it a couple of times then I'm gonna come in from here and I'm gonna make a half loop and just let it trail off so I'm gonna do that on the other side from the bottom, come up, let it trail off. And then I've got to come up around here. 
here for my center loop. Go all the way across the top. I want quite a bit. And see, I've got a little part here that's not covered up. I want to cover that up with black. I don't want any of the white or the cream or the gray showing in that little area right there. So you cover it up with the black and then your bow looks more complete. And I'll come up from the center. Just come around. And that, that's just about all you need on that top loop. real smooth so I'm going back over it to make the transition from this line smooth and then I'll go down the top of the box lid with my liner a little wobble right there I'll straighten that out just like that. So then I've got the loop done at the top. So here is, here's my completed one again. Got the loops at the top, got the snowflakes across the top, green and white stripes. You could reverse this. You could put the green with the red and white stripes at the top. You could make green zigzags down here at the bottom, make a red top. Uh, there's no right way you choose how you want your colors to be. Um, if you like to decorate with other colors, um, I use a lot of the Grinch. I have, I have all of the Grinch designs that, that they have done over the years. So I use a lot of this lime green. So that's one of the reasons that I added this lime green in here because I thought this would, would be good with my Grinch things. But Whoville is pretty colorful. So you could do one to go with Whoville that has pinks, that has purples, that has oranges in it. So I hope you have fun painting the stack boxes. I thought it was a lot of fun. I thought it was an easy paint because uh, the CDC cutter cuts all those lines for you. So it makes it really, really easy to paint. You don't have to add the snowflakes. You don't have to add the squirrels. You can make them solid. That's strictly up to you, however you choose to do it. Make it your own. But I hope you make these stack boxes because they are so much fun to paint. And happy painting. Hope to see you next week or the week after for another tutorial on painting because I sure do love painting these yard arts from Yards R Us. See y'all next time. Bye-bye. Now, how do I end it? Uh, end.